गुड आफ्टरनून सर गुड आफ्टरनून मैम या गुड आफ्टरनून सर डॉक्टर प्रसाद सर विल प्रेजेंट द एसएलओज ऑन हिमोलाइटिक एनीमिया एंड अप्लास्टिक एनीमिया सर काइंडली ओवर टू यू सर सर प्लीज स्टार्ट थैंक यू सर सो गुड आफ्टरनून एवरीवन सो आई विल बी टॉकिंग ऑन द हिमोलाइटिक एनीमियास दिस इज फॉर एसएलओज and uh, i am not prepared for uh, plastic anemia i am sorry i will cover with uh, the other uh, uh, topics okay sir it's okay sir so there are uh, total seven competencies in hemolytic anemias and there is one uh, there is that procedure that requires certification uh, in uh, it is on uh, 16.6 so of the seven competencies first one is uh, define and classify hemolytic anemias describe the pathogenesis and clinical features of hematological indices of uh, hemolytic anemias and uh, all this uh, can be covered in a, a lecture and probably my i wrote a small group discussion but uh, probably a lecture is sufficient to cover all this and again i would like to integrate integrate this uh, with uh, medicine and uh, uh, physiology and classify anemias so probably um, uh, physiology and medicine will throw some light on uh, the definition and uh, classification of uh, hemolytic anemias and also clinical features and uh, the third competency is describe pathogenesis clinical features hematological indices if of uh, the sickle cell anemia and thalassemia these are the major uh, two hemolytic anemias we come across in our practice because of this migrating population it is uh, not unusual to come across nowadays thalassemia in uh, uh, south india too earlier it was uh, very rare uh, to see a thalassemia or sickle cell anemia but now the frequency has increased because of this uh, population migration and um, so uh, these uh, two topics are very important and probably a correlate session will help us to correlate the features of uh, pathological findings and uh, the pathogenesis with pathology and uh, medicine will throw light on uh, the um, the clinical uh, clinical uh, uh, features and also the investigation aspect and uh, when to suspect this uh, uh, sickle cell anemia and thalassemia and probably we can include uh, the blood bank as a part of this uh, correlated session and the requirement of blood transfusion services which are specifically indicated for this thalassemia and sickle cell anemia which are of a law i mean uh, they 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 it runs for years and years with respect to the patients so we should have a provision in a, a good uh, hospital a separate session a separate uh, section for this uh, thalassemia the management of thalassemia or sickle cell anemia or any transfusion dependent anemia so blood bank and also medicine uh pathology may give a, th throw a good light on this uh, two diseases sickle cell and th thalassemia and also this is probably community medicine uh, because these are all chronic diseases and uh, require uh, the community services and uh, the uh, burden on uh, society so probably community service com community medicine also can throw light on the uh, special problems associated with uh, uh, patient care in this uh, sickle cell and thalassemia cases and fourth competency is describe etiology pathogenesis and hematological indices and uh, peripheral bl blood picture of acquired hemolytic anemias um, probably this is uh, a lecture and a small group discussion and uh, you, the suggested uh, method of assessment is written and viva for everything and probably we can invite uh, medicine people to throw light on clinical features and uh, when to suspect this so acquired the variety of hemolytic anemia in a clinical setting and the fifth competency is uh, the uh, describe the peripheral blood picture in different hemolytic anemias it is purely pathology, uh, pathology or hematology a uh, probably a small group discussion will uh, facilitate good uh, learning rather than lectures and uh, you can uh, show different um, slides and also the uh, charts prepared uh, for this uh, you know, different uh, hemolytic anemias and we can discuss in small groups and uh, this will facilitate uh, the learning process effectively and sixth one is uh, prepare a peripheral blood smear and identify the hemolytic anemia from it so i thought it is uh, too much for a ug but anyway it is given as a competency we have to do it and uh, prepare the peripheral smear is a skill 
and identifying uh, hemolytic anemia is a uh, diagnostic skill again. So performance orientation is uh, the um, uh, thing here. And probably a top session will help us to uh, facilitate this process. And skill assessment, skill assessment is the, the method of assessment. I have designed some of the uh, um, OSPI sessions. I will, I have, pro I have posted already. Just go through that OSPI document, and uh, that is only one example. But you can modify according to your requirements and taste. And uh, I will uh, post some more tops, uh, so, sorry, OSPI uh, documents in the later time. And the number of required, uh, number of times required to certify, I don't know, I put uh, 10 as a number, uh, but uh, I don't know exactly, I could not find any um, evidence to suggest that 10 is sufficient to um, uh, give a uh, good uh, skill for a for anyone to prepare a blood smear. Uh, I don't know, I, I request uh, the members to throw light on this afterwards. And the seventh one is describe the correct technique of uh, performing a cross match. I don't know why it came here. Uh, you should have been in uh, blood banking, but anyway, it's a correct technique only to perform cross match. It is not uh, what you call uh, to do cross matching. Okay, so it's a skill based and uh, shows how to do the cross match correctly and a small group discussion and demonstration. And uh, this OSP station will help us to. Um, assess the candidate in this uh, setting. Okay, anything? Anyone to comment on this? Seven SLOs, uh, sorry, in, uh, seven competencies. We'll go individually to each one. Go ahead, sir. Okay. But I, as you said, sir, 16.7, blood bank, oh, yeah. uh, I don't know, we have to see in that blood bank competency whether this is there or some. Okay. Uh, typo okay. error has happened or what we don't know okay yes okay. we're coming to the first uh, competency define and classify hemolytic anemias um the define definition this is uh, lecture is uh, enough and uh, classify hemolytic anemias enough or you can uh, give us a what do you call that um, um assignment assignment to uh, find out the definition and also classification of hemolytic anemias because not it's not a big uh, classification and uh, they can refer and uh, come with the prepared uh, uh, um, Hello. Uh, yeah dr Anthony? lanjewar is there yeah. yes sir uh, doc, dr prasad yes sir it is hemolytic anemias are mostly childhood problems okay yeah so you want um so integration i think pediatric should be included yes sir i will do that yeah yeah okay then. yeah coming to second uh, competency describe the pathogenesis and clinical features of hemolytic and hematological indices of hemolytic anemias and uh, uh, the slos are describe the etiopathogenesis of hemolytic anemia Describe clinical features of hemolytic anemia. Describe laboratory findings in hemolytic anemias. This is um, facilitated very well uh, with a small group discussion, but I don't know. The time constraints uh, are uh, many, so probably you can uh, go for a lecture uh, in the um, uh, practical sessions. Probably you can uh, engage them in small group discussion in order to understand the clinical features of hemolytic anemias and also laboratory findings in hemolytic anemias in a better way. And uh, so assessment method is written and viva. And uh, probably as uh, Sir was telling, medicine and pediatrics may be of uh, help to integrate vertically this um, uh, competency. Any discussion? Dr. Atharva, uh, you have raised your hands. Unmute yourself and say something. Dr. Atharva ji. Uh, he is not connected to audio. Okay. Atharva, yeah. you can. Uh, you can. Uh, WhatsApp. Uh, you can WhatsApp or uh, may send message. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. Okay. Okay, sir. And uh, third competency is describe the pathogenesis, clinical features, and hematological indices of, and peripheral blood picture of sickle cell anemia and thalassemia. Here, uh, the SLOs are uh, describe the pathogenesis of sickle cell anemia, 
and uh, describe the clinical features of sickle cell anemia and laboratory findings in sickle cell anemia. So the pathogenesis of sickle cell anemia, probably the, it was taught in biochemistry. And uh, this is the first uh, disease with, with a molecular basis with a single nucleotide change uh, the producing the disease. This is one of the best example. And uh, so they can uh, uh, submit as an, uh, 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 this as an assignment and uh, this can be integrated with uh, biochemistry. And describe the clinical features of sickle cell anemia. Um, so this is again a lecture. There are many clinical features and complications of sickle cell anemia. So it should be in the lecture mode. And when you are showing, so showing the slide in uh, the practical class, probably you can uh, engage them in small group discussion. And uh, this is uh, again integrated with medicine and pediatrics. And describe the laboratory findings in sickle cell anemia. Uh, they again uh, lecture and uh, a small group discussion during practical uh, sessions. Anything? Okay, sir. Sickles. So coming to the other uh, part of this uh, third competency, that is thalassemia. Thalassemia is a very important uh, disease. Classify thalassemias and describe uh, pathogenesis of beta thalassemia and uh, describe the clinical features of beta thalassemia. Describe laboratory findings in beta thalassemia. Clinical. Uh, then again, I included here even even though it is not mentioned. I uh, spirocyte hereditary spirocytosis as a part of this um, competency, even though it is uh, unfit to be here. But uh, I felt uh, we see uh, frequently. I mean, uh, we see the ca cases of hereditary spirocytosis, and I think uh, the one needs awareness of this. So I included this uh, as a uh, entity here. So classify and uh, describe the pathogenesis probably by means of lectures. And clinical features again uh, a lecture and small group discussion and uh, laboratory findings in beta thalassemia uh, through lecture and small group discussion again as service telling it may it can be integrated with uh, medicine and uh, pediatrics so i want inputs regarding uh, hereditary spirocytosis uh, i can't uh, see anyone raising hands okay but I think Hello. We can, can we? Hello, sir. Yes, yeah. Dr. Langevar. Can we arrange a visit of the student in thalassemia units? Yes, what sir. they are doing there, they can see exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Visit but in all, the, yeah, yeah. Okay. But all yes, the, in the hospitals, in the may have that will be. Yeah. That will be more beneficial to them. At, at least they will see what is happening, how oh, transmission yeah. is given, how they are taken care of, like that. Yes, sir. Yes, no, I will and maybe that. one demonstration of osmotic fragility test along with that. Uh, yeah. Osmotic fragility test actually um, I included in the chart. So probably you can show them chart and ask them to identify. Osmotic facility as such is a cumbersome test. Um, yes. But yeah, that interpretation will help them. Ah, yes, as a chart, how to interpret? Okay. Okay, sir. So about uh, hereditary uh, spirocytosis, anyway, when we tell them to classify uh, oh, yeah. causes of, we tell them intrinsic and extrinsic. So, yeah. intrinsic may membrane disorders, etc., they play important role. These are how, yes. and extrinsic, we have another different causes. So, yeah, during true. classification, all this, yes, if we touch upon, this is how they present. Actually, makes mm. a, it's, okay, sir. Okay. So, next competency four. That is describe the etiology, pathogenesis, hematological findings, and uh, per peripheral blood picture in acquired hemolytic anemias. So here uh, the SLOs are classify immune hemolytic anemias broadly. Uh, this uh, this classification that is allo immune, autoimmune, and a drug induced variety of uh, hemolytic anemias, and describe the pathogenesis of immune hemolytic anemias, and describe clinical features of immune hemolytic anemias, laboratory findings, and um, so we also included uh, PNH. 
so etiopathogenesis of pnh and the clinical features and laboratory findings of pnh so it is mainly uh, in the form of uh, lectures and clinical features probably uh, immune hemolytic anemia small group discussion will uh, help them and so is the uh, slide if you have uh, slides we can show them and discuss uh, in small groups probably that facilitates learning and again it should be integrated with medicine sir uh, actually in this acquired uh, even the malaria plays a very important role so infection okay so we can say classify uh, acquired causes of uh, acquired hemolytic anemia so okay. in that uh, march hemoglobin urea then that valve ka, valvular oh, yeah. you know yeah in that also you get hemolytic and then you get yeah. in um, hus and all these are the different causes so and infection most important malaria plasmodium hmm and then immune uh, hemolytic is one part of acquired hemolytic anemia okay. so we can ask uh, and include and uh, yeah classify oh. and give the etiology of uh, hemolytic anemia and then the right. okay. yeah okay i'll do that yes sir and uh, P what about pnh pnh actually sir it is you know post graduate level but we can yeah. tell them in one when we tell them these are the classification of uh, uh, acquired hemolytic anemia we can touch upon it saying yes paranoxymal nocturnal hemoglobinuria that we can just tell them in few words so the uh, uh, at least they are aware of that entity they become aware but actually yeah. it is a postgraduate uh, and uh, yes yeah topic yes. yeah okay so fifth competency is describe the peripheral blood picture in different hemolytic anemias it is a uh, by, I mean, a small group discussion will facilitate this uh, process of learning and we can show them slides, we can show them charts and um, we can discuss with them. And uh, the suggested method of assessment is written or OSPI. So OSPI station, I will uh, design mm -hmm. and I will uh, let you know or post to the group. Okay, sir. Yeah. And the uh, sixth, uh, Competency is prepare a peripheral blood smear and uh, a report on hemolytic anemia from it. So prepare and stain the peripheral smear, blood smear from a given blood sample and identify the peripheral blood smear findings in hemolytic anemias. So this uh, prepare and stain the uh, blood smear from a given sample is a skill based performance oriented. A DOP session is uh, a good one and uh, OSP is a better way to assess and a skill assessment a student will prepare the smear from normal and anemic samples because uh, what i thought is they might have done in uh, physiology and uh, repetition of just uh, making smear will not help uh, much or it is nothing uh, new they acquire so what mm -hmm. i uh, did is normal smear and also anemic samples will be given to the uh, candidate to prepare smears as an osp station which hardly takes uh, five minutes in order to know that uh, the uh, anemic samples are very thin and uh, difficult to prepare smears and uh, when compared to normal so if they can make it uh, from uh, the normal and anemic uh, samples that is good so it can go as an asp station and uh, hardly it takes uh, five minutes and uh, the second thing is first uh, regarding staining arrange the leishman staining steps in correct order so there will be uh, small small cards with uh, which includes the steps in uh, uh, leishman staining and uh, it will be jumbled there and they have to arrange it in a proper order to get uh, good marks and uh, troubleshooting probably you can include a troubleshooting uh, session here uh, that means improperly strained uh, smears or with muck or uh, acidic um, diluting age, uh, distilled water or alkaline distilled water uh, which is used for diluting and uh, they should uh, tell probably these three uh, should be picked up by student in order to get a good staining so that can be given as an OSPI station here. Any, any feedback from anyone? Any discussion? Anyone wants to say? Who's raising hand? Dr. Malini. Dr. Malini. Dr. Malini. Yeah. Um, just wanted to know this. Uh, Thing about preparing can you hear me uh, yeah yeah tell me ma'am yeah uh, i just want to know this the, when we ask them to prepare why do we insist on this preparation of smears actually because even as a pathologist i think i'd make horrible smears uh yeah actually, yeah that, that is we true insist on preparation of smears because that's a skilled job right 
uh, yeah that is true that is that is the reason why i was uh, asking the group how many yeah. times yeah. they should do in order to get uh, the certified yeah. skill absolutely because i think they are assessing them for something that is requires a skill a certain skill to it yeah. so isn't that unfair mm -hmm. because it, just because they made a bad smear then you reduce the marks for them i think that's very unfair right <laughs> oh, but uh, yeah, this is a competence you know ma'am prepare peripheral blood smear so that's a competence i don't know we have to write uh, the mca in order to remove this part yeah we probably cannot assess them okay it's fine to let them know how you prepare a smear but yeah. uh, assessment of uh, smear preparation based on just doing it once or twice i don't know i somehow feel that's very unfair on the student yeah yeah actually we demonstrate to them how you prepare at a 45 angle a 30 yeah. one draw yeah. and then we yeah. have the preparation of the slide should be edged should be notched so that the body tail everything is prepared yeah. so that one yeah. demonstration can be given yeah. and what we do here uh, earlier in our old uh, curriculum we all of them give them prepared slide and they just have to stain it yeah, yeah. that is what we also I do i think man. that may be better I, I, when when it's being assessed, okay, you can ask them to prepare smear because at some point even they might might have to do it. But when you're yes. assessing them, I feel it may be better to assess the staining than assessing the preparation of a smear. I don't know. That's just my thought on it. Because I think even if I was made to make but, a smear, uh, I'd madam, feel miserably in that. No, no, agreed, madam. But what we can do is that let them. Uh, uh, we may not have at least once, twice if they we see them doing in a proper way. that is ah. enough we don't have to tell okay. them they have to perfect the skill okay. because at okay. least if they do it with their hand at that uh, second mbbs level so when they become right. interns or internship when they have to peri, uh, finger prick karke one blob drop of blood on the slide and prepare the smear at least that mm -hmm. they will remember they had done once at least that for mm. that reason so we need not have okay. five to 10 times they have to do to certify so we did not give that importance to it as soon as we are no they are aware of it they are pacing that the angle at 45 that steps if we see them they are doing it it's okay that means they are aware if okay. we can make them do it so that can be done but hmm. it's not like a but life uh, basic uh, you know life support type yeah. where they yeah. have to be yeah, so the importance we need not give them sir okay yeah okay, okay. okay. Yeah. thank you thank you sir okay. thank you ma'am yeah okay we we'll move on to the last uh... yes sir yeah Think is uh, describe the correct technique of performing cross matching. So probably we have to teach them, demonstrate them uh, this technique, and uh, probably we have to integrate with uh, blood banking. And uh, this it is a skilled procedure, but uh, it is only just uh, show how. Probably we we can uh, give them the cross match steps and ask them to uh, arrange them in a correct order in uh, OSPI station. So any inputs? Uh, 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 describe the correct technique. Mm. Uh, so how it comes in dope? It's like do perform assist and uh, observe. They can observe it, but uh, mm. yeah, observation only. And uh, performance yeah. is that's why I, it just uh, shows how. Ha, yeah. Ha. Mm. again here they can uh, go, go blood bank uh, somehow whenever they have the they can see actually the cross match how it is performed yeah this the technique will be described to them importance mm. of cross match uh, tube yeah. cross match because what mm. we do in our old we give them a slide method to do uh, grouping that is mm. a, a practical uh, we give them in blood bank yeah yeah we do yeah. that there yeah okay okay So I will do that. Um, um, aplastic, uh, yeah, that uh, other aplastic anemias in the next session, ma'am. Okay, sir. So, so I have corrected some cases. Just I will go okay, rapidly sir. go through image based and yes, uh, ask. So eight month old infant with uh, six weeks, two weeks history of uh, swollen hands and feet. So this is the case. Probably you can design your own cases. Peripheral blood smear yes, showing uh, many sickle cells, and there are sir. Questions and the sickle cell crisis actually, uh, the swollen hands probably bone uh, pathology, and these are the uh, questions I asked. And uh, second case is 29 year old male, incidental finding in a hemogram. What is your interpretation? It is uh, the all parameters are almost normal except for uh, the MCV 
so it's a mycocytosis and um, whenever they face mycocytosis and mchc a uh, little on the higher side 37 uh, the, so they should think of uh, hereditary spherocytosis or uh, the beta th thalassemia traits so that is the importance of this and uh, it's a case actually a beta thalassemia minor and case 3, 40-year-old uh, male patient complains of passing red-colored urine after consuming beans shown in the image. So these are all uh, fava beans. And uh, fava beans are associated with uh, hemolytic crisis, hemolysis in a G6PD deficient patient. Uh, so urine sample is uh, red in color because of uh, intravascular, uh, sorry, hemolysis. And uh, this uh, A test tube for uh, normal uh, urine for comparison. And uh, peripheral smear showing this uh, by cells and retic preparation showing reticulocytosis and there are some questions uh, based um, uh, related to this and uh, this is uh, the again chart so urine sample from a, a patient uh, what's your diagnosis so this is uh, the uh, different um, time periods of collecting urine samples you can see the changing colors as uh, the patient um, the, as the day progresses usually the intensity of this uh, red color or uh, it goes on decreasing and um, so this is a typical presentation in only even though it is typical but it is it is seen in only 50 percent of the pnh patients just to make them aware that such a presentation can be there and if you see this type of varying uh, intensities of color probably you should think of uh, pnh and uh, this is a case of pnh and uh, case 5 18 year old boy with uh, jaundice since birth and operated for gallstones recently so the uh, glitch here is uh, the 18 years very young age for uh, gallstones and whenever you come across a uh, young boy with gallstones and jaundice think of the possibility of the hereditary spherocytosis or hemolytic anemia and uh, on the um, top of your differential in this case you should think of hereditary spherocytosis ask for cbc so your uh, mchc will be high and you will see spherocytes in the peripheral blood and there are some questions regarding this uh, hereditary spherocytosis and uh, recently patient had uh, i don't know i cannot see this one patient uh, so blood sample uh, showing hemolysis that means uh, the plasma is showing coloration and uh, where do you see this uh, type of um, change so it is not a mechanical uh, trauma to the rbc it is just a well drawn sample but showing hemolyte hemolysis so you'll see intravascular hemolysis is the basis for this and there are many causes for intravascular hemolysis and uh, they should know this and uh, this is a typical case a 15 year old uh, female with uh, chronic anemia you can see that uh, chipmunk uh, faces and uh, the x-ray showing hair on end appearance and the peripheral smear showing many target cells see the target cells and uh, howell jolly bodies probably here and hypochromia so it's a microcytic hypochromic anemia chronic anemia with uh, bone abnormalities and uh, think of the possibility of uh, this thalassemia and i have given some questions for this uh, beta thalassemia and uh, this is um, the uh, case of hereditary elliptocytosis the question is how do you prove it is hereditary so this uh, answer there should be test the siblings so they should test the siblings in order to prove its hereditary nature or else uh, there are many causes for uh, elliptocytes and image based questions or uh, there are some so identify the preparation they, they should tell um, retic preparation if there are reticulocytes here and uh, identify the cell marked by the arrows so sickle cells and this is the osmotic facility curve in a four-year-old child with splenomegaly and anemia so shift to right is uh, showing this uh, curve shiftage possibly this is um, the increased susceptibility for uh, hemolysis at a higher concentration and uh, some of the mcqs and a 17 year old boy same thing gallstones with the bilirubin of uh, 3.8 grams grams for dl and urine urobilinogen is increased the possibilities of thalassemia g6pd hereditary spherocyte pnh so hereditary spherocytosis is the correct answer and all are true with the intravascular hemolysis except so bile pigments they should know it is intravascular hemolysis and uh, uh, it is unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia and they will not have bile pigments in their urine 
and all of the following RBC disorders are resistant to malaria except so the alpha thalassemia trait is not uh, uh, I mean uh, is not uh, resistant to malaria but others G6 PD sickle cell absence of Duffy group or offer resistance for uh, malarial parasite especially falciform or uh, vivax in the case of Duffy group it is vivax a couple with a family history of beta thalassemia in a distant relatives has come with uh, come for counseling husband has a uh, little uh, hba2 on the higher side and wife has uh, a normal hba2 and uh, what is the risk of having a child with beta, beta thalassemia major but it is only just zero uh, percent they cannot have a beta thalassemia major So in fact, with presence with mild, jaund mild anemia, jaundice, and uh, the peripheral blood showed uh, spirocytes, and reticulocyte count was 18%. The peer parents says that uh, uh, several of their uh, family members or, uh, have a similar illness. The infant is most likely to have uh, a defect in oncaring, that is hereditary spirocytosis in this case. And um, a 16 year old female noticed that her urine becomes red after she if after she uh, given uh, she was given sulfamides for the treatment of UTI. I don't know who will give sulfamides nowadays. <laughs> Both urine and serum test positive for uh, free hemoglobin, and the peripheral blood shows normocytic normochromic RBCs and a few bite cells. So that's a uh, catch. And deficiency of each substance is most likely to be responsible for these symptoms. So G6PD. So OSP station I posted already in the group, but it's not very perfect. I will uh, perfect it and post uh, some of the possible OSP stations that can be developed for uh, hematology. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Sir, I was wondering about HUS. Should we mention because that is the hemolytic uremic syndrome? Can can this be a part of uh, you know, of uh, competency of hemolytic anemia? I don't know whether it comes under uh, uh, platelet disorders. Usually we cover there. I don't know where it is covered. Uh, HUS. Because the peripheral picture is also has a correct cystocytes, which we tell them peripheral smear. Uh, yeah, yeah. You have to uh, identify uh, fragmented RBC, which is known as cystocytes. Yes. And that's how we uh, in that. So I, I don't was know. wondering. I have to see that uh, uh, competencies in. Uh, the platelet disorders if he's not there then uh, we can include here yeah because I'll what happens that, uh, yeah. somehow peripheral smear for the nephrologist mm -hmm. is very very important and falling platelets right. so that yes, with this uh, even without other this they go ahead and you know treat the patient accordingly hus mm, yeah because, uh, they, uh, and uh, yeah. and I mean, they make very senior people we see when they nephrologists suspect hus then the cbc yeah, of that yeah. particular <laughs> is usually seen by a very very senior person uh, to identify yeah. um, uh, cystocytes and uh, all those other features true yeah true. So. because what i for, for think is it is an included under uh, the platelet disorders hemolytic uremic syndrome and uh, thrombotic thrombocytopenia purpura they come together okay Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the hemorrhagic uh, disorders. Yeah, we have one uh, hemorrhagic disorders. Yeah, I think it is there. So, but in that hemorrhagic disorders, sir, uh, I don't know whether uh, HUS uh, is a uh, the the terminology itself is hemolytic uremic syndrome. No, that is true, ma'am. Uh, but uh, thrombotic yeah. thrombocytopenia, uh, thrombocytopenia. TTP, DD. It forms a close yeah, DD with uh, TTP. Yeah, yeah. It uh, comes under that uh, category only. So it yeah, is discussed yeah. okay. in Robbins, I think, uh, together. Okay. Yeah, maybe we'll we'll have to see those. Because they are related, and closely related, and it is important to distinguish both the conditions. Yeah, yeah. The, so it is included under platelets. Sir. That's what I remember. I will mm -hmm. refer, and I will. Uh, if it is not there, okay, then sir. I will include here, ma'am. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Any any input? Any feedback? Any discussion? Anyone? I can't see any raised hands. Uh, sir, sir, as, as usual, made it so clear. Yes, sir. That we feel, uh, I mean, hardly any any improvements can be done. Okay, thank you, sir. 
so it was very beautiful thank you sir thank you ma'am uh, sir dr sanjay bedi sir sir can we discuss about the forthcoming uh, uh, webinars in uh, sls pathology regarding the timing and uh, yes uh, we uh, there is a development that tata memorial hospital has also started uh, organizing webinars and uh, uh, we need to uh, coordinate uh, i mean we have we need to shift our webinars so that they do not clash with the tata memorial hospital webinars so uh, how do the uh, participants propose what changes should we make uh, any alternate day instead of tuesday and friday which is also taken by tmh so can we take uh, uh, Sir, Wednesday Langeva sir and... has raised his hand. Sir, unmute yourself, sir. Please speak, sir. Ah, uh, Vinaya. Yes, sir. Doctor, Doctor Prasad has given a very nice presentation. Yes, sir. And then your question about malaria and hemolysis. Yes, sir. You can add leptospirosis also in that. Yes, sir. That is also infection and hemolysis. So just one or two sentences that these are the infections which can cause hemolysis. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Okay, sir. Yeah, good. Very nice. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Others, please, uh, about the timing, let's discuss. So, and uh, Dr. Uh, Hemlata. Mm, is she there? Yeah, I think so. She was. I saw her, Doctor Hemlata. Yes. Uh, Doctor Hemlata, unmute I have Hello. Yes. Yeah, tell me. Uh, ma'am, can you hear me, ma'am? Yes, we can hear. I'm Doctor Hemlata, ma'am. Yeah. Hemlata, Hello. Hello. Uh, uh, is Tuesday. And uh, now the webinars have changed from afternoon to evening, which is also which you also said you find it comfortable to have it in the evening. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So uh, we are now thinking about the timing. I mean, uh, Tuesday and Fridays, majority of the participants through our web, uh, WhatsApp have expressed the desire to. It clashes with the TMH, as Dr. Sanjay Bedi sir said. Yes, ma'am. So, can uh, it possible on Wednesday for you to present uh, your SLOs which you have prepared on introduction okay, to hematology? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. Wednesday is okay. Now, what time? Six or seven, whatever you say. Okay, seven will be fine, ma'am. Seven will be fine. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, seven Wednesday at present because Tuesday TMH lecture is there. So, as of now, for everyone who are listening, so the next yes, uh, webinar on SLO pathology will be continuing with hematology by Dr. Hemlata yes, on Wednesday, 7 p.m. Thank you, Dr. Hemlata. Oh, thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Now, regarding and the timing. A... Yes, yes. Please continue. Sir, you tell now, sir. Please tell, ask others about the timing. Now, this Wednesday is fixed, about... but uh, the second day, other day, which day will be? people prefer any any suggestions dr manupriya dr neha which second day we have to keep please give us the input Yes, Manupriya is there. Yeah, all are there. Dr. Sharmila, Dr. Shweta, please give the... Oh, un unmuted Dr. Sharmila. And also... Hello. Yes, sir. 
Ah, any day is possible for me. Don't worry. I will attend any any day session. Okay, sir. So then uh, Wednesday uh, then... Uh, 7 p.m. one day and Saturday is okay. it okay? Yeah. Saturday okay, what okay. time, Good. sir? What time, sir? Any Saturday. time you decide, I am with you. Uh, uh, others who are uh, listening, Saturday is 1 p.m. like we have held today. Is it okay? Or even on Saturday, you all want 6 or 7? Saturday is, uh, 1 to 2 is good, no? 1 to 2 is good, no, sir? Saturday. Everyone, is it okay? Yeah. So please yeah, inform okay. via WhatsApp. Others? Or please unmute yourself and share your uh, feedback. Dr. Dr. Dost Mohammed, please, yeah. please unmute yourself. And Dost Mohammed is writing Saturday 7 p.m. Dr. Manupriya is written, can it be Monday and Wednesday? I don't know about uh, Wednesday. Yes, it is fixed. About Monday, we don't know because uh, Dr. Sanjay Bedi has also uh, many other webinars. So it's up to sir. Monday, there are there will be uh, overcrowding of webinars. The other CBMEs uh, are also there on Monday. And Monday, we uh, also have molecular actually. Many people are also uh, joined the molecular. So there will be a lot of webinars. So Monday won't be possible. Yes. Wednesday is okay. And the second day, as everyone has agreed for Saturday. So there is divided opinion on Saturday, whether it should be at 1 or at, at 7. So please let us know. Uh, ma'am, uh, can you able to hear, ma'am? This is Dr. Dose, ma'am. Yes, yes. Dr. Dose, please uh, go ahead. In our few colleges, they are having a uh, Saturday working day also. Yeah. Uh, like we, uh, the uh, college will be closed by 1 p.m. So it will be difficult to attend uh, immediately after 1 p.m. over there. Okay. It's possible to have by 7 p.m. It will be uh, comfortable for uh, everyone, right. each and every participant to attend. Okay. Lajewar, sir, is it okay on Saturday 7, sir? Yes, yes, it is okay. Okay, okay, thank you, sir. Okay, sir, thank you. So, Dr. Sanjay Bedi, sir, Saturday uh, 7 is okay, sir? Yes, okay. Okay, then. So, thanks for listening to the SLO. Thank you, Dr. Prasad. So, now next week yeah. we are going to meet on Wednesday and Saturday, 7 p.m. On Wednesday, Dr. Himlata will take on uh, SLOs on hematology, on microcytic, macrocytic anemia, and introduction to hematology. And I think so she's also going to take plasma cell disorders, which has one competency. Uh, and uh, then uh, for uh, um, Saturday, I think so, uh, we may have some hemorrhagic and some blood bank SLOs are remaining. So Dr. Professor Rastitva Debroy has agreed to do blood bank, but I have to find out whether he'll be ready by next Saturday. If so, I'll inform via WhatsApp and accordingly we'll have that. And... Uh, the next weeks, there are a lot of some miscellaneous uh, SLO competencies are left. Like there is competency on uh, basic cytology technique, clinical pathology, and introduction to pathology, which uh, I, I'm trying to do it now. So at the end of that, maybe I will try to present that. If it will be ready next to next week. Thank you, everyone. So over to you, uh, sir. In uh, other subjects, pharmacology, microbiology, anatomy, and uh, the session is over and second has started and in second also there is overwhelming response. I mean, it is more than 150 in every subject. So we are thinking of starting the second batch of uh, pathology also. Uh, pathology is uh, CBME, but uh, uh, here we will be starting with the timetable first, and all the participants of the first batch 
who want to repeat it in second batch they can do it for free uh because some due to some covid duties or some uh, changes uh, the, in the last uh, month the, the uh, attendance was low so in the second batch if the those in the first batch if they want to attend they can repeat uh we i'll be we will be starting the second batch in the month of september and there will be two batches only no third batch okay yes it's a wonderful idea sir i think so it will benefit but as you are saying sir if we start off with the timetable it will be very helpful so it will go in continuity continuity for the first batch yes uh, who I will mean, first take batch and will help in the second time yes, yes. Uh, i mean both batches can attend at the same time yeah both batches can attend and for them also it will be good because timetable will be ready for them and then they can work up on the competencies and slos yes sir it's a very good idea sir yes and along the way uh, in next one year we i mean although we are we will be implementing these competencies but there will be some uh, the group will continue and uh, there will be mid course corrections or somebody has got some problems then we can keep on uh uh editing the uh whatever we have the and, document uh, yes yes over the next one year yes sir that will be very good in fact it will be yeah it will be very good yes because there are some topics like curriculum mapping and uh yeah. assessment they are have come up which we have not taken up So they can be taken up only once they have been some implementation has already taken place. Yes, sir. So, so we will continue the group. Okay, sir. Yes. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank yeah. you.